Hello everybody and welcome back to another one of our weekly Stars Align videos and every time I say Stars Align for some reason I want to do like the banana fish opening like Streets Align I don't know why and my goodness has it ever been a weird week for Stars Align it got pushed back I think a day or two by another sporting event but like a real sporting event it's a little I don't know why that's funny to me, but it is, I don't know, it's just a little funny. But hey, at least it didn't get pushed back a full week, right? Before we get into the video proper though, I do want to give a big thank you to those of you who shared last week's video over on Twitter, at Sakochi Anime, at Nacho Gachardo, at Atkinson Calvin, at AugustDV, at SophTheHedgy64, at FireOtaku845, and at YinYangReader. Thanks so much for sharing last week's video over on Twitter, everybody. And if you too would like to have your name shouted out in next week's Stars Align video, then be sure to share this video around on the internet and then tag me at Jojo Talks Too Much over on Twitter, and I will be sure to shout your name out in next week's video. Okay, so getting into it, this episode starts with Maki and Toma talking about the racket situation. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm still this this show really does put me on edge and it just sort of like there's scenes that make my blood run cold because it's just kind of intense and a little too raw and real at times and the whole maka uh maka i guess you i guess that'd be the ship name wouldn't it but Ma maki and toma situation like between them talking about the racket versus them confronting maki's dad it was all genuinely nervous i'm uh, nerve-wracking and i'm still feeling anxious uh coming off the back of it the way toma confronts maki is interesting too because he he like maki asks like hey man do you have a spare racket and he's trying to play it off but you can tell like on some level maki almost wants toma to pry because he doesn't like stop him and he doesn't run away or tell him to buzz off or anything like that he you can tell on some level he wants help and he's just too kind of I, I guess too, too cocky to admit that he needs the help. And Toma is like, like credit to Toma. The dude's heart is as big as a boat. Like he really does care for, for Maki in a big bad way. And he wants to help his friend because that's just what friends do. And the, the way he approaches it is he's not like, he doesn't push him to talk. He doesn't say like, you have to tell me. He just asks that he does tell him what happened to the racket because he's not dumb and he knows that Maki wouldn't have broken the racket either on purpose or even really by accident. It would have to be a tremendous accident for him to break the racket. So he knows that something happened. He just wasn't super sure what. And as it turns out, like, yeah, Maki does fess up that his dad was the one who broke the racket. And we get a little bit into Maki's backstory. And as, as much as I'm comfortable getting into it because it's it's a lot so apparently growing up uh when maki was a young lad his mom was the only one working and the dad was the one who stayed at home uh probably because the dad's a total deadbeat and uh i suppose it's uh it sucks knowing that he was always a deadbeat a, a part of me was hoping like maybe he was at least good to him growing up but apparently not uh, apparently this dude just sucks on toast and I have no clue why Maki's mom ever gave this dude the time of day because Maki's mom seems like the friggin' sweetest. So I don't know why or how these two ever connected and had Maki in the first place. Like, no offense to Maki, but that's that's one weird pick from Maki's mom. That dude sucks on toast. He is just the worst. And I don't understand... Like, I, I just don't understand why someone would do what Maki's dad does, especially to their own kid. It's just disgusting. Maki's dad might be the most despicable character we have in in the, the anime season. I mean, and, and that's... Don't forget, too, like, there's a lot of shows this season. Some of them have supervillains in it, but Maki's dad is still the one that grosses me out the most. He may not be, like, the most baddest of bads, but he is the, the most disgusting and deplorable one of the most disgusting and deplorable characters this entire season. His dad is just... His dad, like, Thomas says it, but it's true, that his dad is such scum that the world would probably be better off if, if the dude was just not on the planet anymore. And and he really is despicable, because it's, it's, it's one thing to be, like, so aggressive towards your son when they're, like, a teenager. It's It's disgusting. But it's a whole other level of gross when you find out that even as an infant, like, like you see Maki just playing with blocks and they fall over and he cries, you know, like a kid, because he's a kid. And the dad obviously hits him 
and like they, Mach even says like I have memories of him hitting me and it's it, again it's so real and raw that I've, I've actually debated like putting in like warnings before the video like I'm not gonna because if you clicked on a video about stars aligned obviously you're you're well aware of the the warnings that come with watching the show but yeah like it's it's raw in ways that I think will turn people off and I feel like that's fair because if you guys remember episode one turned me away like I was like I've like my my parents are wonderful I grew up in a, in a super loving home but I knew kids and was friends with kids who went through really similar stuff and and it, it really really affected me like having that shown to me in, in an anime <laughs> like I was like whoa I watch anime for the escapism my dude like suddenly you're hitting me with the real and I don't know how to handle it so episode one really turned me away it wasn't until episode two that I came back and did the the first stars aligned video and yeah I mm, I don't know like I I can see how it can be a lot for some folks and if I'm totally honest this week's episode um I almost wonder if they're pushing the the misery too far and i and i'm not talking about the maki stuff the maki stuff is great and and we'll get more into it in a second but i, I want to bring up specifically rintaro because the rintaro stuff that's where the episode almost started to lose me a little bit there's two moments where the episode kind of lost me a little bit and it was with rintaro and it was with the student council prez whose name i do, like they gave her like three names in this week's episode and i'm not going to bother remembering any of them for for this week maybe next week but yeah, uh, I'm going to talk about Rintaro first because Rintaro's whole, like, hidden self-hatred, like, this, like, hidden resentment he has over being adopted is, again, very real. Very, very like, I'm, I'm positive that that is unfortunately a real thing that, like, like, children who are adopted probably have some sort of, like, why was I left behind? Like, I can only imagine that that is a thought that goes through like those minds and I, I'm not trying to I, I can't speak to anyone's life experience so I'm not trying to speak on behalf of people who were adopted or anything like that uh, that's not my experience I, I, I can't speak to it so I can't say how true or how uh, how true this is uh, how people should react to this are uh, if they were adopted how they would react I, I can't speak to any of that can't speak to the realism of it but what I can speak to is that I I felt like it was the a touch too much because we already have so many characters who have such intense backstories that adding yet another level of misery to the tennis club almost feels like it's going too far like do, do all of these kids have tragic backstories because that seems not that it's not that I'm expecting these kids to have like rosy like rose tinted lives or anything like that but I almost wonder if it's too far to have every single character have a tragic upbringing everybody has their struggles don't get me wrong and I'm fine with certain characters having like or, or all of the cast having some sort of struggle that they have to overcome pro like before the end of the show obviously you want that in most characters in the story however I have both seen and personally felt the show maybe pushing things too far to the point where it does teeter on the point of misery porn and i've seen that that critique hurled at stars align from other creators from like just regular old anime fans and i'd be lying if i said that i don't see it and i hadn't for a little bit like i did in episode one but then i realized that 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 was just maki but now i'm starting to notice it happening as like a trend and I'm, it, it, I'm, it's, it didn't ruin the episode for me. I still really enjoyed this week's episode, but I worry that the show is using misery, like like throwing misery at its characters as a crutch. And with Rintaro, it almost felt unearned because we we had no hint of this. Like, and, and not only did we have no hint of this, his adoption could have been part of his backstory, and you didn't have to have it be this. The, the way it's worded, it was just weird. Like, I again, I can't speak to, to anyone else's life experience, but for me, the way Rintaro approached it was, was odd because I, it, I, it was just, like, I felt like his resentment towards Maki was more than enough. Like, I, I don't think it had to be, like, also, he hates himself. Like, like to me, I'm like, wait, no, no, no. You, you could have had it that he 
was upset with Maki for taking his place, and deep down he knew that Maki was doing a better job. That's enough drama for that character. You don't have to add more misery on top of it because you already have characters who are trying to work with each other to help each other be better. And you, you have enough. Like, you already have enough. You don't have to, like, if we find out that more characters are like, like, like I just worry, like, like, this character, this character had a loved one who died in front of them. This character had, like, you know what I mean? Like, if they just keep piling it up. I just, I don't know. I, I worry about about the show maybe going too far because i feel like right now it's at the perfect level you you could keep it going with 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 these backstories alone you know itsuki maki toma now rintaro you, you don't need any more like the other characters can have like trouble but i don't think that they should have like as intense backstories as the other four that that's just me i feel like you have enough at that point because to tie it back to toma and maki when you have something as intense as the scene of Toma and Maki confronting Maki's dad, you really don't need any more intensity. That scene on its own was a lot. Like Toma and Maki are are brave to do that. However, I really think that Toma should have had like either gone to the cops or gone to the teachers or gone to his brother gone to any sort of parental figure to help because approaching it on their own was a mistake and it's but at the same time it it fits perfectly within the show i don't mean like it's a mistake on the show it's a mistake on the characters but it services the show because it just further proves that these characters really do feel like real teenagers like this is a, a move i can see teenagers making like toma being like i don't need anyone else i can protect my partner on my own and, and they really hammer home, like, the partnership. And I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, the partnership. Because I ship it like FedEx. But the line of, like, I'll kill you. That's, like, such a teenager thing to say. And, the like, I don't, like, it, it was, like, them approaching it, right? I was, like, I was really waiting for one of the adults in the show to step out with Toma. Like, I wasn't expecting it to just be Toma. I was expecting either the whole tennis club or like Toma and then Toma's brother or Toma and uh, their teacher. Like I was expecting another like adult to walk out because right now the reason why Maki's dad has power in this situation is because he's the only adult in the room. And if you add in another adult, you do run the risk of like fisticuffs happening or even maybe something worse as uh, Maki's dad does threaten Toma's life. Which, like, at that point, I'm like, if you threaten a kid and, like, say something actually happens and the cops are not immediately called, then I'm going to say that the show is going too far. <laughs> like, because then, then at that point, it's almost unrealistic. At this point already, I find it really jarring that this man is, is not arrested. I, and I know people have been like, yeah, but blah, 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 like, and, and given a reason, and I respect that. But if it gets to the point where he's, like, threatening to murder a child and then actually harms said child yeah then i'm then i'm gonna have issue with it being a little unrealistic because there's no way and yeah like like that whole scene is a lot also toma my boy listen when somebody asks you and is threatening you asks you for your name you don't give them your name like in that moment when he asks Toma for his name, I was expecting Toma to tell him like, I'm not telling you my name, are you out of your mind? Or like to give him like an alias or to like tell him to shove it up his ass or something. Like I wasn't expecting him to actually tell him his name. I just wasn't expecting Toma to actually tell this man his, f not only his name, his full name. Like, are you, are you serious? And he even hints that he's gonna go to his house because he specifically says like, I bet your parents have have, uh, you must have real great parents and he and he jokes like I'll I, like I'll remember this Toma and it's like okay so not only does he now know your name you know that he's probably gonna he's probably gonna kick the hell out of your brother and your brother's not gonna see it coming because he's probably not gonna tell your brother what happened and like because if you told your brother what was what what happened and your brother was smart which I know he is he would at least be prepared for it or if not go to the cops and this dude, he, this this has got to stop. Like this, this is a lot. Like right now, again, like I said, right now, 
it's it's doing its job because it, he they really make this dude absolutely despicable. And so far, it's still within that realm of possibility. Like I could see this actually happening. But if it goes too far, again, like I just, I, I, I feel like all the stars align, not just this episode, but the show as a whole really teeters on this knife's edge of like going too far with its drama, you know? And right now it's it like in most episodes, it leans towards it being totally fine. And I think it works absolutely well and just serves the show to like to better illustrate like how dramatic the show can get. Like, it, like the, the edginess of it really does benefit the show. In this one, I feel like not only does it go a little too far, but it maybe focuses on characters who don't need the focus, and that ties back into the student council prez, who I, I'm not even going to really talk about for much, but I just felt like it was incredibly jarring to follow the scene of Maki's dad with the student council prez and her family having this like almost goofy like scene where the mom and the grandma like don't get along and they fight but like not in the way that we've seen other people fight in the show they like have like a jokey like like goofy scene i can't explain it like it, it just feels like two it feels like two anime characters like pulling at each other's hair but like in that cartoony look and it just felt unnecessary especially given that i really don't think that anybody watching the show right now cares about the student council press like i really think if anything most people are either indifferent or just don't like her because she's like portrayed as being like just cold and mean for no real reason and it's just well i mean she has her reasons like i understand why she's like like she's trying to save the school money but at the same time it's like she's just an obnoxious character like she's just kind of rude for no reason and like she's rude when she doesn't have to be and to then have a scene where I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to even really feel towards this character. It was just odd to follow such an intense scene with that. Like you could have just transitioned back to the school and Maki feeling like, uh, like, like, cause when the character comes into the, the classroom, he like gives Toma like the smile and the nod. Cause like they, they, they think they won even though we the audience know like, no, there's going to be hell to pay after what you two did. But like you guys are allowed to have your victory right now. And it just, that should have been the scene that followed. Like the whole student council prez thing, that, like thinking back on the episode, that felt like either padding because they needed to stretch the episode out or just like a weirdly placed scene. And, and there's even like some odd jump cuts in this week's episode. It, it's just weird because we followed an S rank episode last week. Like I, I still think last week's episode was phenomenal. It was, it was fantastic because it was like, it felt like the first like victory. You know what I mean? Like it felt like, we had such a high and then we were brought back down by the dramatic like tennis racket scene. And, and that to me felt like the appropriate amount of, of, of edgy drama that you should have in the show. This felt like edgy drama to the extreme to the point where I almost feel like it went too far. And there's like little additions that I was just sort of unimpressed with. On the whole, I still enjoyed this week's episode because I think every scene, every single scene with Maki and Toma was fantastic. Maki's dad is ex expertly despicable. Like, like the show really sells that this character is awful and you hate him and that's the point and he's great. Like he's he's a great antagonist, like a, a great heel, you know, like you really hate that guy. And again, every scene with Maki and Toma is fantastic. Um, I think the scene with the, 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 the tennis club's uh, president is is great uh his or the manager rather not president sorry the the manager like that little scene with him in the locker room i thought was fantastic um i think on the whole this episode is good but it's just it's funny coming off of last week w where i loved it so this week uh, this week's episode where i'm like yeah that was that was that was good i hope you guys aren't mad at me for saying that like again i still think it was good um but i'm just i, I worry like that like if you know me I, i'm a really anxious dude and i i'm i'm for some reason i always think worst case scenario so i'm always worrying like is the show gonna go too far i don't know like i'm very anxious like that so sometimes i just get in my own head and, and this week i got kind of in my own head during during the episode and I, I was starting to starting to worry a little bit about the the rest of the show I'm, i don't know why I, I i am i feel like it's gonna be just fine but that's just me you know like in these videos i'm not trying to be like captain critic i'm not 
like trying to be some like sort of like this is this is how like this this episode does this this and this right and this this and this right like i'm not trying to be a critic like with any video on this channel nine times out of ten i'm just letting you guys know my opinion just kind of having a chat and that's all this is really meant to be so again if you loved the episode and you thought it was the, the best thing since sliced bread and that it's a total s rank episode that's totally fine we can agree to disagree there, there ain't nothing wrong with that and i think we can all agree that stars aligned is still a really good show with that said everybody i'm gonna go ahead and give this week's episode a rank of of B. I'm still really enjoying the show, but I just, I, I always get anxious with shows like this. I don't know if they're going to go too far or I, I don't know, but I'm still really digging it. And I hope you guys are too. And on that note, everybody, that's going to wrap up today's video. But before we take off, I want to give a big shout out to the good folks over on Patreon, namely those in the Earl Grey tier, Calvin Atkinson, Crowbar of Irony, Dominic, Urza, Gin Kotaku, No For Nothing, Maria Teresa, Mirth Mouser, Omni Garamond, Cell, Shadow Creative, Sipco Games, Somastan, Steven, Tristan, Verdin, and Westborn Eastbred. A huge thank you to those of you who support the channel over on Patreon, and if you too would like to join the T-Squadron, then be sure to check out that first link in the description to check out our Patreon page, see all the cool rewards you can get over there, as well as access to our Patreon-exclusive Discord. Thanks once again for checking out today's video, everybody. If you enjoyed it, then you've probably been on the internet long enough to know what to do already, so I ain't gonna tell you, but I will say that it is appreciated. And if you are feeling stressed out today, then you go have yourself a warm cup of tea, and I will talk to you all again real soon.